Hi, was probably expecting me to be in California like the title says, but I'm not anymore, unfortunately. Okay, I'm back home. So other than the ride and getting there, I didn't actually end up filming a whole lot while I was in California. I didn't film for a couple reasons, so I'm just gonna sit down and talk about it. Talk about the highlights, cause there definitely were some. And then just show a little bit of the footage and pictures that I do have. One, I didn't wanna film a whole lot inside the house because it wasn't a hotel or an Airbnb. It was actually someone's private home and it felt weird. It just felt a little bit invasive. It was very pretty though. The part me and Coda stayed in was very much still under construction and they were refinishing stuff. So a lot of the flooring and walls and stuff weren't done. The plans that they have for it, we were talking about it and it sounds really nice. Like the stuff that they did have was already pretty cool. Like they had this light fixture that I'm pretty sure she made herself that hung. <laughs> that was pretty cool. How many times can I say cool? Sierra, find a new adjective, uh-huh. But the light itself was like a dimmer light, which I love dimmer lights. I don't wanna have to only choose between bright interrogation, obnoxious lights, or just like pitch black darkness. Sometimes you just wanna sit in a low light. A low light is my vibe. They also had like a whole wood swing inside and like this floating chair thing, which was, I'm gonna say cool again, <laughs> but whatever. It was dope. <laughs> I didn't take a picture of it though like I thought I did and I'm really upset by that. I think you, we all know what a swing looks like and you can picture a chair hanging from a ceiling. And that's what it was. <laughs> it was a very relaxing space. I think Coda also found it very relaxing at times because all she did was nap everywhere, all the time. I've just, I've really never seen a dog that can make a home anywhere, fall asleep anywhere. I'm jealous. I'm mad actually. I wish I could just fall asleep anywhere and everywhere. I wish I was the kind of person that could just fall asleep. In general, just fall asleep. I just wanna fall asleep. <laughs> That's also why I didn't film a lot. We didn't really do anything. I don't think vacations or breaks or anything necessarily have to be Go, 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 do this, do that. I think my favorite vacations are the ones where we really don't do anything. We took a couple trips downtown to get coffee or food and that was it. Okay. But that doesn't mean we didn't have a few venture adventures inside though. Don't worry. I got stories. Wanna be a trip with my mom without some chaos. First thing we learned while being there is that Coda loves to sit at the window or sit at a back door and watch the birds and the ducks. Can I like personal space at any moment in time? But we also learned that she does not like goats. They had two goats that we were pet sitting and anytime, anytime they would come in sight, it was on site for Coda. To be fair, these weren't like the normal size goats that I feel like we see at like petting zoos or anything like that. These were big ass goats. Their heads were probably here and I'm 5'4 and a half for reference. Anytime she would see them, she would just like bark and go crazy. I don't know what her plan was for if she did get to them, but I can tell you now these goats were unfazed. I'm pretty sure they were actually taunting her. I mean, these were some gangster goats. They would come over and she would start barking and instead of running away, like I think most normal animals kind of do, they would walk towards the window. Full eye contact, ready, like, what's up? I eventually had to build like a fort of boxes and chairs and things to block the two ends of the hallway towards the back doors. So Coda couldn't go out there by her or go look over there by herself. And you would think that that's where the goat story kind of ends, um, but it doesn't. 
by like day three, maybe four, the goats decided that because they couldn't taunt her anymore, because Koto didn't have access to the door, that they would just, you know, knock heavily. Um, <laughs> and by knocking, I mean headbutting the door. The first time it happened, I thought someone was breaking in. I was like, this is the middle of the day. You're bold to try to break in in the middle of the day. And I was looking at Koda like, it's time to shine. You're going to be a hero today, right? It's the light outside though. I could like peek around the corner to see what was happening. And why was it the dang goat head button the door? <laughs> I mean, it was giving very much. Here's Johnny. <laughs> So of course that makes Koda anxious because now she can't even see what's happening but she can hear something and she's like yo what the hell so I had to go outside walk around the whole house to the backyard and try to like guide this massive goat I can't tell if they're angry or just like demanding attention I'm really not sure but I had to guide it away from the door the whole time thinking please don't ram me I will not make it I cannot fight a goat so just like quickly picture in your mind me outside guiding a goat that is both bigger and very much stronger than me away from a glass door with Coda in the background barking and going crazy. Thankfully they only did it maybe like two or three times in the whole two weeks that we were there. Each time was very shock inducing because it's not subtle at all and again i'm so mad i never recorded it like every time they did it it was like chaos with coda and trying to get her into like a spot oh god <laughs> but it was like chaos trying to get coda to a spot where i can like stay and then like go take care of the goats so it was just like no time to even try to record but another thing i'm also grateful for is that at sunset they get locked inside their closed off area thing because i swear to god if that ever happened in the middle of the night when it's like pitch black darkness outside because we're in the middle of the woods there's like no street lights you can't see anything fully would have passed out watch enough scary movies and murder documentaries to know how that story would have ended and my story also would have ended. Speaking of more nightmare fuel, I talked about this in another video that I don't like birds. Well, okay, it's not that I don't like them. I can enjoy them from a distance, watch them, you know, fly and do their thing from a distance. But I don't like birds getting too close to me. I don't like birds. I have a fear of them. I don't like them. I've talked about this in a different video, which I'll like link or whatever. Let me start by saying I love animals. Don't get me wrong. I absolutely, I love them. I like them more than people <laughs> most times. Um, but this bird or maybe bat, we're not entirely sure, but I'm going with bird because if it was a bat, that's even kind of scarier. But this bird seemed to have forgotten that it belongs outside and only outside. Let me start from the beginning. It's probably like, 9 10 p.m and i get a call from my mom it's like hey um can you come upstairs i was like why she's like i think there's a bug in the house and i'm like okay i don't like bugs either so i don't really know why you're calling me but i was like uh okay sure i've never been more thankful that there's two separate sides of this house and coda was downstairs because i walked up there opened the door and immediately just see this thing this bird very very much obviously not a bug flying back and forth between the kitchen and the living room and the front door is just like wide open but it's not flying out so um yeah i'm not really sure what bug she thought it was she knew immediately that it was a bird because there was no way that you thought that was a bug but she keeps insisting she just didn't know what it was yet and i think she's lying <laughs> But apparently what had happened was she opened the door to let the dogs out one last time for the night. And while the door was open and she was waiting, this bird flew in and then kept missing the massive gaping hole of the door and couldn't leave. So there I am already freaking out seeing this bird. It's just flying back and forth. I'm hiding around the corner. Chewy, one of the dogs that we were watching, running back and forth with the bird. And I'm already freaked out. And my mom's like, how do I get it out? I don't know. I promise I don't think my ever, my ever, I promise I don't think my heart has ever gone from calm to beating out of my chest faster. I felt like I was just like 
paralyzed by fear for a moment that again i forgot to record any of it my only thought was this bird's gotta go i shit you not for like the next hour i was like shaking after i got back downstairs it was my nightmare come alive Despite all of that though, I will say it was overall a good trip. And there was definitely some good moments. Like Coda, she still doesn't love the car. I think she kind of realized that nothing bad is gonna happen while you're in it. She actually started to enjoy it a little bit. We were able to actually take a like a day trip to the shore. Finally got to see the Pacific Ocean for the first time after living here on the West Coast for two years. It was an ocean. <laughs> no, actually though, it was really pretty. We went to like this like beach and it was empty. There was like no one else there. There was like one trailer. But other than that, there was no other people. Coda loved it, but Coda's such a water dog. She hates baths, but she loves the water. She just wants to jump into every puddle, lake pond ocean <laughs> then we went to the redwoods and drove through there for a little bit and let coda walk along the trail we didn't get to stay as long i think maybe one day in the future we'll actually make like a trip trip to the redwoods we definitely want to go back for sure it, it was beautiful i love nature i really do just not birds i don't really like bugs either but like i can respect them when they're in their own environment i just don't like bugs in my house all in all though, I will say it was a really good trip. It was nice to like, after two years, finally kind of take a secluded trip and not look at the same four walls, look at four different walls. <laughs> but yeah, it was fun and I enjoyed it. And I'm sorry I didn't film a whole lot for it, but I was just kind of just enjoying my time there and enjoying relaxing and not really doing much. It's kind of what I wanted to do. I got some footage. Yeah, give me that. I got a little bit of something. I almost didn't upload this just because I had so little footage, but I was like, no, it's such a nice memory that I kind of want to share those moments a little bit and then create something that I can look back on and be like, oh yeah, that bird. <laughs> but there's that. Bye. <laughs>